Today we celebrate the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our celebrant this evening is Father Jim. Our Mass is being offered for the intention of Joe Umeli. Please stand as we begin our Mass. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good evening, everyone. Brothers and sisters, let's acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. Bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites. There's the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. There's the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all. God bless it forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to matthew glory <clears throat> to you O lord after he had fed the people jesus made the disciples get into a boat and precede him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds after doing so he went up on the mountain by himself to pray when it was evening he was there alone meanwhile the boat already a few miles offshore was being tossed about by the waves for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once, Jesus spoke to them, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. When he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The words of the Gospel are here since we wiped away. Bless my heart, my lips, and mighty God, the name of the Gospel. Oh. 
My wife Cindy died in July of 2008, but even before her death, I felt that God was calling me to the priesthood. After her death, I spent uh, two years, approximately two years in discernment before applying to the Diocese of St. Augustine in Florida for priestly formation. And one of the first questions our children asked me when I told them I'd been accepted as a seminarian and was going to Boston to study at Pope St. John the 23rd National Seminary, the question was, well, what are your plans for the house? They had other questions like, am I taking a vow of poverty? You know, what's gonna happen to your money? Of course, they had a vested interest in that. But this was the question about, what are you gonna do with the house? And I told them I was planning to hold on to it in case things didn't work out at the seminary. And I've always been one to never take anything for granted, but in hindsight, I think the decision to hold on to the house was hesitancy to go all in, if you will, for the Lord. When I arrived in Boston, a number of my classmates had done just that. They sold their homes, they left good jobs, they changed their permanent address, and they brought all their stuff, all their personal items with them to the seminary. They were all in, but it had to be quite unsettling for them. For my part, I still had my military retirement. I still had our house in Florida. Comparatively, I really didn't bring much with me to Boston. And part of me was doubtful that I could make this extraordinary change in life at the age of 56. I think I've mentioned before, I wasn't even an altar boy growing up. How was I going to do this? Well, it seems like I was a lot like St. Peter uh, in today's gospel. I was walking towards the Lord, but very much aware of what was happening around me and fearful to a degree of the plan that God had for me. Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, come. And St. John tells us, but when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. Beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Peter started his walk on the water with his eyes fixed on Jesus. It was only when he began to turn his attention away from the Lord and to the storm around him did he begin to flail about. Fear is a very powerful force, but it's one that cannot overwhelm the love of God. Moreover, we know God is truth. He will never deceive us. Friends, as followers of Jesus Christ, we are asked to keep our eyes focused on Him and abandon ourselves in full trust to the truth and to the faithfulness of Almighty God. And we can only do this through a vibrant prayer life. Jesus is at prayer in today's gospel. He's often at prayer in the gospels. After the miracle of the loaves and fishes, he goes off to the mountain to pray, to discern the plan his father has for him. He meets up with the disciples on the Sea of Galilee and responds to the terror that had seized them. Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. And the Greek phrase he uses can be interpreted in two ways. Ego emi is accurately interpreted as it is I, but can also mean I am. I am being the exact phrase God uses to identify himself several times in the Old Testament. And today's first reading from the book of Kings places the prophet Elijah on the mountain taking shelter in a cave. God directs him to go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And the Lord comes to him not the subsequent wind, not in an earthquake, not in a fire, but he comes in a whisper, a wordless voice. Friends, it's in the quiet solitude of prayer that God makes known to us his plan for our lives, a plan that is based on truth. His words cannot deceive because God is truth. For our part, Jesus simply asks us to fix our gaze on him and not be frightened by the terror that may surround us at times. To place all of our trust in him, fully aware that left to our own devices, we can do nothing. But with Christ, all things are possible. With Christ, all things work for good 
for those who love God. I finally did sell our home in Florida about three years ago. I could have saved myself many anxious moments if I had listened to our children who strongly urged me to sell the house while I was in the seminary, while I was in formation. That being said, even when we falter, the Lord is there to save us from drowning. He is Emmanuel, God with us, ready at all times with an outstretched hand, ready to lift us when we cry out to him as Peter did, Lord, save me. Let us now profess what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Friends, aware of God's quiet presence at work in our lives, we place our needs before him. For Pope Francis, successor of Peter, may God continue to bless him with good health and vitality. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected officials, May God graciously watch over them in their service to their people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those sinking in the waters of pain or fear, may Christ the divine physician calm them and grant them peace of mind. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, <clears throat> hear our prayer. For our faith community, may the Holy Spirit help us more firmly embrace our faith in a loving God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Anthony Giordano, Mary Ramsbacher, Betty Fink, mother of Margie Gusikoff, John Endres, and jo Joe Umali, for whom this Mass is offered, may they welcome into the eternal life God gives through his Son. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, loving God, hear our prayers as we seek to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ each day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Spread and drink this cup. We proclaim our death, O Lord, until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, 
Nelson, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. The Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. In the body of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life. Be afraid. 
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a great weekend, everyone.